people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to FNAF News. For today's video, we got Steel Wool Studio sharing brand new info on their PAX West booth. Hex has revealed a ton of their upcoming FNAF plushies from the fun times to the glam rocks. And we've even got some major updates on the second FNAF movie that teased the appearance of the puppet. Peep the brand new background, you can see the silver plaque has come in, thank you all so, so much for 100,000 subscribers. There's Plush Trap in the reflection of the plaque but here it is. I'll show it off briefly in today's video. This is actually the smaller version of the plaque that YouTube has started manufacturing, but Nonetheless, I'm so incredibly grateful to finally have one of these things. We hit it during the FNAF 10th anniversary, which was incredible timing, and also leads to an incredible segue. On August 8th, Scott actually put out a message on the official FNAF Scott Games Twitter account, saying thank you to all of the fans for making this an amazing 10 years, and thank you for being a part of the anniversary today. The outpouring of love for Freddy and the gang has been really heartwarming to see. It makes everything worthwhile. So just a very sweet message from Scott, but he was not the only the one celebrating the FNAF anniversary, well, besides all of the insane releases we got throughout the week, because Steel Wall Studios posted some brand new artwork of Freddy and Mr. Cupcake celebrating the 10 year anniversary. And even though the anniversary week might be over, Steel Wool is still gonna be celebrating. As you may have heard, from August 30th to the 2nd of September, they're gonna be attending PAX West, with Freddy Fazbear himself, as well as Glamrock Freddy, also making an appearance at the booth. But what exactly Steel Wool is going to have at their booth? this year is still pretty vague. Last year, they had a demo of Help Wanted 2, as well as a whole bunch of props made from Ruin. During the anniversary week, they did reveal the secret of the Mimic, but that's not set to be released until next year. So whether or not they're gonna have an actual game at their booth, we're not entirely sure right now, but they did share a whole bunch of other details regarding their appearance. Like I just mentioned, Regular Sauce is gonna be dressing up as Freddy and Glamrock Freddy again. And speaking of cosplay, they'll also be hosting a cosplay contest every single day. And also, to the first 50 people that visit the Steel Wool booth. They'll be giving away paintable minifigures. As you can see here, you've got the heads of Freddy and Glamrock Freddy. As well as Mr. Cupcake, these things will be extremely limited. Moving on now to merchandise, let's start off with Hex because they have revealed just a ton of brand new products. First up, they've revealed their FNAF 1 hoodie line, showing off a hoodie with Foxy ripping through the cloth. This artwork is done by Snarls, and they have done such an incredible job. Foxy looks so, so detailed. Though, of course, of course, Foxy is not the only FNAF 1 character getting a hoodie. As we can see here, Chica and Carl will also get one, with the two characters also peeking through a hole in the hoodie. And then finally for hoodies, this is the full look at their upcoming glow-in-the-dark Shadow Freddy hoodie. You can see it's very similar to the Shadow Bonnie hoodie they released a while back, with the Shadow Drop actually being Hex's next planned wave, and that'll likely be releasing in September. And of course, in that wave, we're also set to get plushies of Shadow Bonnie as well as Shadow Freddy. Those are still being worked on. However, Docker recently shared an updated design for the Shadow Bonnie plushie. And then a bit further down the line for Hex in October, we're going to be getting this brand new Nightmare Own plushie, which as you may notice, doesn't actually feature the trademark button eyes. That is because Nightmare Own features LED lights in their eyes, which are powered by batteries located in the back of their head. You will be able to replace them with the actual plushie. And personally, this is probably my favorite Hex plushie. It just looks so accurate to Nightmare Own themselves. And the glowing eyes is just absolutely incredible. And then also for this wave, we're set to get a t-shirt as well as pin of Nightmare Own. But Hex is still not done because if you remember a while back, they teased that the fun time animatronics are also on the way, with Docker recently showing off the prototype for the Circus Baby plushie. And it seems like the general consensus for this plushie is that this is once again, another fantastic plushie from Hex. Actually comparing it to Circus Baby, it's incredible how much detail they were able to put on the plushie. I mean, even the bell on her boots jingle. But we're still not done, because for all you Glamrock fans out there, we got the two girlies revealed to us. With Hex revealing the prototypes for the Roxanne Wolf plushie, as well as Glamrock Chica. Now, always keep in mind that these are prototypes, so things will likely be changed for the final products. But besides that, I'd love to know what are your thoughts on these prototype plushies? What are your thoughts overall for Hex? And next up for merchandise, let's talk about Funko. You may remember in a past video, we talked about them actually losing the action 
figure and plushie license to Jazzwares. But also, in that video, it was noted that Funko can still make their original line of products like Mystery Minis, Snaps, and especially Funko Pop figures. And releasing soon for the FNAF 10th anniversary is this brand new pop of the puppet. A few years back, they did release a pop figure of the puppet inside of their music box. But as you can see with this brand new mold, this time they're stood upright, they're lurking towards the player. That original puppet pop figure has always been one of my favorite FNAF pops. But this brand new mold might take the cake. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this brand new puppet pop figure. Also keep in mind, a withered golden Freddy pop is still on the way. I've seen a few comments about that. Unfortunately, we're just gonna have to wait a bit longer for info regarding that figure. And next up for merch, let's briefly touch upon Cloak. And I say briefly because their FNAF 10th anniversary collection, dubbed the Night Shift Collection, is now actually sold out. With this wave featuring some incredible designs of every single FNAF character throughout the franchise, it's really a shame that this line only lasted for a week because I know a lot of people missed out on this drop. Luckily, however, if you missed out on that Cloak drop, it does seem like another one is on the way, with Cloak tweeting, keep an eye on the music box. And attached is an image saying it's not over yet, with the date September 6th in the bottom right-hand corner. And of course, brightening up this image reveals a photo of the puppet. And lastly, for merchandise, let's talk about U2s, because since the last FNAF news video, they've released two brand new FNAF waves. The first one being the Chipper and Sons Lumber Company figures. You can get a two-pack of Tyke as well as Chipper himself, and also some Monitor Buddy figures of the Termite King and Sea Bill. With the second U2s wave actually being themed around Into the Pit, the latest FNAF game release for the 10th anniversary. No figures this time around, but a pin set featuring Oswald as well as Spring Bonnie, and actually, interestingly enough, psychic friend Fredbear, who doesn't appear in the game, but that has been released as well as a plushie of the Yellow Rabbit. And lastly, for new U2's products, an 8-inch tall Sun and Moon figure has also been released. It has the same exact design as the original Sun and Moon figure, so I saw a lot of people disappointed by that. But I guess if you missed out on that original drop, or you just want 8 inches of the daycare attendant, this figure's for you. And lastly, for U2's news, a brand new Roxanne plushie's on the way, with this one being a 16-inch long weighted Roxanne. Roxanne plushie. They've released a weighted plushie in the past with that one weighing almost three pounds. So I guess if you want to get crushed by Roxanne, this plushie's for you. But moving on now, let's talk about Five Laps at Freddy's from Click Team. This was one of the projects released for the FNAF 10th anniversary. It received a demo on Steam, and if you've seen the discourse online, you'll know that originally it launched with quite a few bugs. Thankfully, however, Click Team is working on multiple patches. In fact, the other day they released a patch. The full title is set to be released next year for 2025 and apparently Click Team does plan on launching the game on mobile as well as consoles if they can. Based on how that message was worded, it doesn't seem like it's confirmed necessarily that the game is coming to console and mobile, just that eventually they would like to launch five laps on those platforms. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. It does seem like this game has a lot of further development planned. So here's to hoping when it does actually release, it is worth the wait. And talking about something that's absolutely worth the wait, let's talk about the second Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming December 5th of 2025. But actually, before that, let's talk about the very first FNAF movie. Because on December 8th, Walmart will be releasing a limited edition steelbook for the first FNAF movie. And I've seen a whole bunch of mixed reactions on the design of this steelbook. We already had a FNAF movie steelbook, which honestly, I thought nailed the design. So with this new one being limited to Walmart, they did have to switch up the design a little bit. And I can see what they're going for. I just don't necessarily know if they did it all too well. But if you do like it, this is available to pre-order right now, and like I said, it's coming out on the 8th of October. But now, let's talk about the second FNAF movie, because we've been getting a whole bunch of updates on that. I've already made a dedicated video to all of the anniversary reveals of the animatronics, as well as the screenplay, so I'm gonna leave that link down below if you missed it, but for today, we got some news regarding the filming of the movie, and like I mentioned earlier, some teasers of the puppet making an appearance in the movie. So thanks to Louisiana Entertainment, people were able to to find that a film with the working title Music Box will be filming in the state from October 28th through January 31st of 2025. Previously, we've heard reports that the second movie begins filming in October, so that does line up very well with the second FNAF movie, but it's the working title that really sells that this is for FNAF. Music Box, of course, one of the main gameplay aspects of the actual FNAF 2 game. Winding up the Music Box, making sure that the puppet doesn't escape. The first movie operated 
under the working title Bad Cupcake, and I think we all know just how important the cupcake was in the final film. So if they're now using the music box as the working title this time, that just goes to show it seems like the puppet is going to have a pretty major role in this upcoming film. We did hear a music box during the credits of the first movie already teasing the appearance of the puppet. And with how integral the puppet is to not only the FNAF 2 lore, but the lore of the entire franchise, it's no surprise that it seems like they're going to have a pretty substantial role in this upcoming movie. We do already know that a new major male role is being considered for this film, which a lot of people, including myself, are theorizing could be Henry Emily, and if that's the case, it would only make sense if we also got a Charlotte or Charlie Emily who possesses the puppet to go alongside Henry in the new movie. Even though we got a whole bunch of the toys and withers revealed to us for the anniversary, we still have not seen any official teasers or looks at the puppet for the film, and it is also worth pointing out if this filming date is accurate of starting late October, finishing at the very end of January. That gives them 10 months from when filming ends to the release of the movie, so it seems like they're expecting a lot of post-production after filming is wrapped. At least compared to the first movie, it also seems like they're filming longer for the second film as well. So all around, it seems like they're putting in a lot of time for this movie, which I can greatly appreciate. But like I said, your thoughts and theories regarding this FNAF 2 movie news, I'd love to know in the comments. But that is going to do it for this FNAF news video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.